uh, uh, Genesis 32, 22 to 32. Uh, this is Jacob's wrestling match with God. You, you, some of you have probably heard the story uh, where it is that, that Jacob is now free from his father-in-law Laban. And, but now Jacob has to deal with his brother Esau. Interesting thing about Jacob and Esau, some of you will recall that, that Jacob did his brother Esau wrong. He tricked him. He took advantage of his brother. Uh, he stole from his brother. He received his father's blessing in the place of his brother. And the last time Jacob saw Esau, Esau said to Jacob, I'm going to get you if it's the last thing I do. Jacob said, you wait, you wait till mom and dad are not around, and I'm going to skin you up. So Jacob took off. Esau said to Jacob, I'm going to skin you up. So Jacob took off running, and now he's been gone for some years. Jacob is on the cusp of his promise. He's ready to walk in the things that God told him he could have. Uh, Jacob is on his way to uh, newness. He's in a period of transformation where God is moving him from one degree to the next transition, not transformation, transition. But before Jacob can move to the next, he's got to first deal with the problem of Esau. Got to get that right. So I know it's trite, but you ought to write this one down. The next, uh, uh, in order to move into newness, in order to experience God in his fullness, got to go back and correct those things that are out of sorts. Notice that God didn't do it for Jacob. Jacob had to go back and do it for himself. He had to face his Esau. Now your Esau might be an abstract situation. It may be some things that you did in your past that are left lingering. It may be, get this one, your Esau may be some things that you started that you did not finish. It may be some things that you started that you did not finish gotta let God help you to correct those things that are out of sorts. Can I keep going? Uh, the Bible says that, that Jacob sent everything and everybody away at night. All of his stuff, all of his servants, all of his wives, all of his family. He sent them away. So now he's left on one side of the brook while his family's on the other side. And the record says at night, a man came to him and, and started grappling with him or wrestling with him. At night, when it's easy to know you in a fight, but you can't see what you're fighting, Jacob had to wrestle. At night, where the tricks and the traps of Satan are not so easily discerned, Jacob had to wrestle. At night when you are vulnerable because you can't really see what's happening around you, Jacob had to wrestle. Somebody say at night. But I love it because Pam, he was wrestling in his night season when everybody else was asleep. Oh, my God. Everybody else was asleep, asleep, but Jacob was wrestling while everybody was, in, was engaged in their nocturnal slumber, while everybody else was going on with business as usual. God had J, uh, Jacob engaged or locked into a period of self correction, preparedness, if you will. You know the problem? The problem, sisters and brothers, is they've been sleeping on you. All of that wrestling you did last year, all of that stuff that you went through, while they were sleeping, you were wrestling. Uh-huh. While they were feasting, you were fasting. Uh-huh. While they were going to the party, you were trying to get your mind right so that you could progress. They've been sleeping on you. They've been sleeping on you. Uh-huh. While they wanted to celebrate the foolishness that this world had to offer, you were engaged in conversation with God. While they were slipping and tripping, you were studying, trying to make sure you get that grade from a C to a B. They've been sleeping on you. 
Are we still together? At night, when it's dark and things are not going my way, the suggestion is, let me go. Let me go, because it's almost daybreak. And Jacob decides, I'm not letting you go. At night, when things are not going my way, and I have every excuse, and even to a certain degree, permission to let go, Jacob decides, I'm not letting you go. I'm gonna get an amen from the balcony in a minute. When everything around me is, con is, is caught up in confusion and chaos, when it appears that, that things can go wrong at any moment, I'm told to let go, but Jacob said, I will not let you go. Y'all with me in here? So he says, I will not let you go. What's up, Jacob? Jacob said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. Unless you bless me. Here it is, sisters and brothers. Your word is not only go back and correct your Esau situations. Your word is, your word today as you move forward is uh, make sure that you hold on until you get what you started for. I'm around, I'm around, and to a certain degree, I am guilty, and perhaps you will see yourself too many times that we make these sincere declarations and bold predictions about what we are going to do. And we start, but we don't finish. If we start at all. And so, and so, and so the Lord says, listen, it is your job to hold on until. May I suggest to you that you can't let go now because too much has been invested in you and too much has been invested in your future to let go now. Somebody say, don't let go. You have come too far and you're too close to that thing that you've been praying for to let go now. Somebody say, don't let go. Baby, you've been through too much and you've had to spend too much to get to the end and decide that you're too tired to press forward. Somebody say, don't let go. Here's the reason, here's the reason, why, here's the reason why I'm doing the most in the name of the Lord. Now, when you put this on Twitter and Facebook, make sure you reference it right. Please, please, because they don't think they're going to think that you don't understand or the preacher does not understand what I'm talking about. I understand because I'm doing the most, right? And in your eyes is wrong, but in his eyes is right. I'm doing the most. And you, do you know why? Because, Mother, I have reasoned within myself that he has already done the most, and he keeps on doing the most for me. And since he has done the most for me, and he keeps on blessing me. When you check Errol Domain at 8.30 on a Tuesday, at 6.57 on a Thursday, at 8.10 on a Saturday, you don't have to worry about me. I'm doing the most. I'm doing the most because God so loved the world, that's me, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have uh, eternal life. I'm doing the most. I'm doing the most uh, because he was born, uh, yes, uh, to a virgin uh, for me. I'm doing the most because he lived, uh, he walked this earth, uh, and he did nothing but good uh, for me. I'm doing the most. I'm doing the most uh, because he let them stretch him wide uh, and put him high uh, on my behalf. Uh, I'm doing the most. I'm doing the most uh, because when God said uh, he bowed his head uh, and he gave up the ghost uh, for me. I'm doing the most. Uh, I'm doing the most uh, because three days later, three days later, when they went to look for him, uh, he wasn't there. He was in the heavens uh, at the right hand uh, of the Father for me. I'm doing the most. Uh, 
I'm doing the most uh, because it didn't make sense uh, to save a sinner like Errol Domain. Uh, but God looked at me uh, and he did the most for me. Uh, and I wish somebody would make up their minds. Uh, I'm doing the most because uh, he blessed me. Uh, I'm doing the most because uh, he keeps me. Uh, I'm doing the most because uh, he holds me. Uh, I'm doing the most because uh, he covers me. Uh, anybody here? Is there anybody here that's made up your mind? Uh, I'm doing the most. I'm doing the most uh, in the name of the Lord. I'll go to the end in the name of the Lord. I'm pressing, I'm holding on. I will not give up in the name of the Lord. Somebody shout, I'm doing the most.